Are you struggling in your relationship? Is it wearing you down? This is a great time to assess if you're dealing with a true toxic relationship. Let's take a look at these 10 signs and then let's find some answers for you. I'm Carol Tuttle and I wanna help you create an amazing relationship. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna teach you and share with you one of the most beautiful things you can do for yourself that you might not expect that will make all the difference. It's not an obvious choice when it comes to improving your relationship. Because in most cases, we work on the relationship itself, and I'm gonna suggest another alternative. Let's talk about toxicity first. Um, Toxicity, there's kind of like this, this range in relationship from ups and downs, but hey, we get along pretty well. Then there's this dysfunction. Yeah, we tolerate it. We can really trigger each other and really get each other going to toxicity where it comes into a place of it being so toxic that it's unhealthy and even dangerous in many cases. And so we're talking about that extreme today so that you can make some different choices for yourself and get the help you need. Because that is um, a very painful way to live. And it, you know, there's these extreme states of discomfort and we create them in three areas of our life, either in our health and our weight to our re experience with money and in our relationships where we can create this really, really toxic experience. So what are those 10 signs? And take a moment and subscribe to this channel. It's I'm here for you. I have lots and lots of videos. Our channel keeps growing here because more and more of you are seeking wellness and healing. And you wanna create that affluence and joy that's available for you that I teach. And I'm here to help you. These are my free resources and I have some paid support for you as well. It's even more potent and powerful and you certainly get your value out of the paid offerings that I promote on here. But what's the first sign of a toxic relationship? And again, remember that, that range. We're talking the most extreme, painful place to be. It would be the experience of all give, no take. You're the one giving, giving, giving. And you're expected to be the one giving. You're the one showing up, wanting a better relationship, wanting to get a partnership going. You're all the work, you compromise for this other person. It feels lonely and exhausting to you. And whatever you do, whatever you give, it just doesn't seem to make a difference. And it's almost expected and not recognized. So there's not a reciprocity there. The second sign is you feel unhappy all the time. Now it's not up to the other person in your life to make you happy. That's what country music songs promote. <laughs> and it's not really their job. You're in charge of your own happiness, yet if they're presenting scenarios constantly to, let's say you are happy and then something plays out where you're just deflated again, you're beaten down. Not If you're physically getting beaten down, you need to get help right now and you need to cut professional um, support for that. But you're just emotionally beaten down. So it's almost like they're jealous of your happiness. Like you don't deserve to be happy. And no matter what you do, you just go back to this place of defeat, of a lack of happiness. Number three, a lack of trust. And maybe there's been actions and choices made by the individual that you're in an intimate relationship with that have really challenged your trust. It's very hard to trust them. And your, you know, your intuition is a great guide in your life, especially in relationship scenarios. Is that trying to tell you something? And there's a reason not to trust this individual, whether there's lying, um, deceit, uh, covering things up, and you've learned you can't trust this person. That's toxic. That is not, should not be tolerated or accepted. Number, we're on number four, hostile atmosphere, relationship with constant anger, and you don't feel safe. This person is triggered into a state of anger repeatedly where everybody shuts down. I had a father that was very, had a lot of rage and you were just watching your, you're walking on eggshells as a kid. My mom was constantly trying to manage us in a way to don't get my father. You know, if you're trying to not trigger this individual, like don't upset them. That's toxic. I grew up in a toxic environment and it teaches you to just comply to this person's anger trying to prevent it and it won't work because if there's anger that can be triggered in rage 
it, you can't prevent it. That stuff's going to come up, and it's certainly not your job. But I was taught, and that's why I have no patience for that in my adult relationships, where it's like, it's not my job to keep you from getting angry. It's your job to manage your anger and heal it. So is that part of what's going on? Number five, we're on five. You avoid saying what you want because there's just no point or, you know, it could trigger that anger or get that person upset. So you're having to pit. You can't be open and free with yourself. It's like you have to constantly be strategizing and plotting and how, you know, how should I act? What can I say? How do I say it? What do I not say? That's toxic. Number six, it's all your fault. You're the one blamed constantly. You're the problem. You need to change. There's nothing wrong with me. They blame you. You are the one that is causing all their pain. That's toxic. Number seven, setting boundaries. And that just brings out more anger and passive aggressiveness in the individual. It's like you have no right for boundaries. They're not respected. There's not um, uh, the right to have your safety, your right to your own space, right to your own happiness. And that is con confronted constantly. Number... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're fighting the, you feel like you're in a battle and you're fighting it alone. That right away, if you feel you're in a battle, that's toxic and you're alone in it. You don't feel like you're a team. There's not this effort to come together. You say, I want to improve our relationship. You're the only one that wants to better the relationship. And there's not open conversations about that with both people willing to take accountability. And this other person is really extreme in their effort to bring you down. And then the next one, there's the physical or verbal abuse, even sexual abuse. If you're feeling you have to cater to this person in a sexual manner, this is all very toxic. And the last one, nothing gets resolved. Number 10, there's no progress. It's just like the toxic groundhog day of a relationship. You wake up and it's the same thing over and over and over. Well, what do you do? Here's the unexpected first choice. Honestly, um, if it's dangerous, you need to get help. You need to seek out support. And in some cases where it's you're at risk and children are at risk, you need to remove yourself. Now, let's say you're not to that extreme and it's just you're unhappy, it's unpleasant, and you feel really stuck. You need to work on your own healing. The Patterns from your childhood contribute to the toxicity of your current relationship. When my husband and I began to learn this decades ago, that we brought our baggage into our relationship and we were recreating our childhood patterns of wounding with each other and we were each playing that role of being um, the other side of it, we, as the years went on, we learned more and more strategies and techniques to take ownership and make those changes within our own healing, to take accountability for what was ours and change the relationship. Now, we did it somewhat simultaneously. It wasn't easy. It was the most challenging thing we did for a good 20 years of our marriage. We had a very, very difficult marriage. There probably were five or six times that most people would have just hung it up and said, we're done and let's get divorced. It, we didn't, we chose not to do that. I've not, I've got another great video titled, Should I Get a Divorce or Not? Or some, we'll link it. It's something like that. Um, doing your own inner healing can potentially shift your entire relationship. Now, why do you want to do this? Even if it might not save or shift your current relationship for the better. Because the likelihood of you drawing someone into your experience to repeat these patterns is very high. You don't want to do that. If things end with the person you're with or you've ended a toxic relationship, if you've not given time to your own inner deep healing from your childhood stuff, odds are you're going to replay some of this stuff in a way that is unnecessary. So either it will better the current relationship you're in or it will change the potential relationships that want to show up in your life. It's your choice. I have a four-week healing plan that we're starting that I'd love for you to join in on called the Healing Plan for Childhood Wounding. Go to caroltuttle.com forward slash childhood wounding. I have helped literally millions of people online here with my healing expertise, and I'm here to help you 
please join us. There are thousands of people in my online Facebook groups that are all there to support you to create a beautiful relationship experience. We'll see you at the Childhood Wounding and subscribe to my channel so you get notified by clicking that bell of my next healing video. Thanks for watching.